right, recording is re-rolling. Uh, we've been <laughs> out and back, and you guys have been spending the last few minutes uh, figuring out the, the launch speed. And I think uh, David cracked it. So Dave, David got about 8.5 uh, meters per second, which um, is right in line with it. Now, everybody should get a little bit different numbers. Remember, there were two different masses of balls. There was a about six gram ball and a 10 gram ball. So even right from there, you're, you're going to get different launch speeds. Right? Uh, but let me walk you guys through the process uh, that David figured out to get uh, to the answer. So uh, let, let's look at the mechanics. Now, I told you guys to set it up this way where you were blasting horizontal off a ledge. So there was a drop height. Right? Now, of course, there are other setups you could do, but uh, just to hone in on this one, because this was a pretty short, straightforward way to do this. Right? Uh, if you want to get the launch speed, you guys see how the launch speed is the same thing as the horizontal component of velocity because you launched it horizontally? Guys, as this ball is flying through the air, does the horizontal component of velocity stay the same all the way through? Yeah, it does. And since that's true, isn't that horizontal component of velocity and therefore the launch speed equal to this horizontal displacement divided by the time of fall? This distance divided by time, right? That'd be it. Now, if you brought a stopwatch, you could have got the time, got the distances. Maybe you have a column they don't have on this table of time, right? But there's a better way to do it because trying to measure the time with the stopwatch is one of the least accurate things that you'll do in labs in this class. You could get a much more accurate time by calculating it based on this drop height, right? Right. Now, let's go back to the mechanics of how this particular setup is. As when that ball is leaving this launch cannon, how fast is it traveling strictly up and down, leaving the barrel? How fast is it going up and down? How many meters per second? You guys saying zero? Zero? Okay. Now, no, it's going really fast to the side, but vertically speaking, it's going zero meters per second, leaving the barrel, right? Now, of course, that immediately starts to change as gravity pulls it down. But uh, what, what, why do we care about the initial velocity? Because, see, what, what we can do is we can calculate the time using a modified version of this first equation. We don't even have to use the whole thing, right? So instead of 8x, I'm going to say h. The x would be some general displacement. I care about this vertical displacement specifically. I'm going to say h right there, right? Then this is not any initial velocity. This is strictly in the y direction, which we just established was equal to what number? Zero meters per second vertically. This is actually v not y, right? And then instead of some general A, I'll put in lowercase g for gravity, like uh, free fall gravity. That's the specific um, gravity, uh, um, specific acceleration. So I can turn that into this. H equals one half g t squared. Isn't that true? Right? It's just a modified version. Right. So how far it falls <coughs> is equal to one half g t squared. Uh, you, you guys have seen this many times over the last few weeks. Let me remind you guys of one of many examples you guys tell us. You guys remember the Paul Hewitt example? If he went into that mine shaft, he's like, hey, I wonder how deep it is. I, I can't see the bottom. So he dropped a rock and he counted to five, took five seconds for that rock to reach the bottom. So let's say five squared is 25 times half of 10 is five. It's about 125 meters deep. I don't know that in college. You guys remember that? Right. Hey, that, that was this expression right here. Now we're going to apply it a little bit differently. We're going to apply it backwards of how Paul Hewitt did it. Instead of knowing the time and calculating drop height, you guys measured the drop height and you're going to back calculate what the time of fall was. And remember why you're doing that. You're calculating time because you're eventually going to use that to do this horizontal displacement divided by the time to get the, the blast speed. Okay? All right. You guys see like the full roadmap? All right. So let's pop in some numbers here. Oh, what'd you guys measure the drop height to be? How many meters? You guys got four meters, right? About, about four meters, right? maybe four and chain. Oh, I'll do a uh, 4.0. Last class, they told me 4.2. Like anywhere in there, four, four point something about, right? Oh, what do you guys feel like using for gravity today? 9.8 or 10? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just use 10. Why not? That's what we, we usually use in here. Uh, if you use 9.8, then that's fine too. Your answer won't differ a whole lot. Okay. All right. Oh, can you guys solve for the, the fall time based on just this? Right. And you guys notice too that it, it doesn't matter which ball you used or which launcher you used, or even if you had you know different launch pages, well, as long as you land it horizontally, this expression will solve for the fall time, right? Isn't it true? Guys, you guys remember this? What if you drop a ball at the same time you blast one out? Which one is the ground first? They tie, don't they? So this would also tell you if you just drop it straight down. 
right? Because it, it only focuses on the vertical motion. This is all vertical, isn't it? This is all vertical, right? Let's do the algebra. Uh, maybe I should multiply both sides by two. So the eight meters is equal to 10 meters per second squared times times squared. Right. What's the next algebra step? Do what to both sides? Divide both sides by this coefficient, right? Divide the 10 down. So let's say I'll swap both sides on that. T squared is equal to uh, whatever eight over 10 is, right? Now, meters divided by meters per second squared, the meters cancel, second squared comes back up on top. So there's the unit, right? Right, eight over 10. What's the last algebra step to solve for time? What do you do? Take the oh, yeah. square root. Square root, boom. That's how you undo a square. Let's see, extract this. Take a square root, do that both sides. Let's say, what, what's the square root of eight on 10? We have 0.89. Time equals, now I'll we'll save an extra digit too. So it's really 0 0.89. Uh, I'll throw in a four just because I'm using this as a middle step. So it's going to carry on to another calculation. Okay. okay. Now, wh whenever you uh, calculate something like this in physics, take a look at that and say, does that make sense? Do you guys think it took a, a little less than a second? This is a little less than a second, right? A little less than a second to go from here to here. Pow, point. You guys think, yeah, that seems about right. Okay, okay, so let's move on to the next part. Let's go, let's flip over to horizontal. Now, uh, horizontal. Guys, is there any acceleration horizontally? Does gravity pull horizontally? No. And uh, do you think we can basically ignore air drag and come out with something that's reasonably close? Yeah. So, so if there's no acceleration, acceleration's gone. Doesn't that just boil down to this? X equals VT, right? Now, X is some general displacement. And here I care specifically about this D, right? So that's where the X is going, it's going to D, right? And the velocity, it always just X equals VT, right? Oh, the horizontal component velocity is the launch speed because you aimed it horizontally. So isn't it just this? Uh, distance is equal to blast speed uh, times the time of fall. Right? You guys can just do that for this particular setup, right? Right? Uh, or if you like, you could have said this. I'll, I'll do the algebra in terms of variables. D over T. Isn't that be true? Right? Uh, what was one of the horizontal displacements that you guys got? What's the value for D? 15 meters? All right, let's pop that in. B blast is go 15 meters and 0 0.894 seconds. Yeah, just like this, popping right there, right? Right? Or, or how, however far it went, it, you, you guys can change out the numerator based on your own lab data. 15 meters by 0.894 seconds. B blast, B horizontal, therefore B blast it is 16.8 meters per second. All right. Okay. Uh, now, yours doesn't have to be the same number. Remember, you guys had different mass balls, you guys had different launch cannons. Uh, so, if you got somewhere between like five and 20, you know, that's like the right order magnitude. You got no, anywhere in there. You are good to go. All right. So uh, once you guys have a uh, double check, make sure your name's on your paper. You guys wrote your name on your paper, right? You guys have a table of data. Looks like this table. You probably have you know, at least three trials, maybe some more. Okay. Uh, maybe use the same height over and over. That, that's perfectly fine today. All right. Uh, and you guys have some calculations. I just, just walked you guys through that. And you guys have a conclusion, and the conclusion is still number of meters per second. Uh, if you got eight meters per second, awesome. If you got eleven point three meters per second, awesome. If you got sixteen point eight meters per second, awesome. It's so, somewhere around there, right? Once you get that, pop that in the gray tray, and that is our wrap on today.